to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead to the people er, of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of, at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Masa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Word of God, word of life. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, the heights of the hills. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Let us shout. Well, I was looking forward to hearing um, he's got the whole world in his hands, but maybe we could sing it together. <laughs> hey, we can sing it, right? He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, sister, in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. What's another verse? He's got the wind and the waves in his hands. He's got the wind and the waves in his hands. He's got the wind and the waves in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got me and you, everybody. <laughs> How do you do that? What is it? 
Everybody here. He's got everybody everywhere in his hands. He's got everybody everywhere in his hands. He's got everybody everywhere in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, I was thinking about a children's moment today. It actually came as a s suggestion um, from some members. They said, how about if you tell people that it takes 20 seconds to sing the chorus to Jesus Loves Me? So when you're washing your hands, you can go, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. And that's 20 seconds. So I yeah, commend that to you when you're washing your hands for 20 seconds. Right? Our new life together. All right, I invite the um, gospel readers to come forward and take up their mic. And you may be seated for the gospel acclamation and for the reading of the gospel today. But I invite you to sing. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now here, and when the true worshipers will worship the Father and the Spirit and truth, for the Father speaks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. Who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, 
What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering the fruit for eternal life. So sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you do not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, how we thank you today for your promise to stand with us always, even unto the close of the age. How we thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness. How we thank you for your steadfastness in times when we do not know what is coming. And we pray, God, that your spirit would fill us these days, fill us with your peace and faith and strength, and that we might be for others a source of peace and strength and faith. So speak to us now through your word, O oh God, and give us your grace and your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Dearly beloved of God, it has been quite a week, has it not? Just a little over a week ago, there were no reported cases of the virus in the state of Minnesota. And then, suddenly there were. And so, a week ago, we had pretty much continued on as usual with a little adjustment. No handshaking, no communion by intinction. Otherwise, kind of business as usual. And then suddenly there were cases in metro area and in Olmsted County, and suddenly we were sitting, listening to the governor and other officials from the state talk about a state of emergency, and everything changed. And the announcements began to roll through the entire professional, collegiate, and even high school sports schedule canceled. I looked in the trib yesterday at the TV sports schedule, nothing listed for the weekend. I thought, wow, now there's a change. Minnesota Orchestra played their concert on Friday to an empty hall for a radio audience. Concerts and theaters closed, churches starting to cancel services. And we are coming together, maybe for the last time for a while. We don't know. 
It's curious, I had a sermon all written for this week entitled, Come to Jesus Moments. And I assure you, when I wrote that title, I really didn't expect to be in this situation. And yet it seems that that is a very appropriate title for, it could be said, could it not, that what we have before us is an authentic come to Jesus moment. You know what come to Jesus moments are, don't you? I sure do. It's when something happens that just rattles us to our core, forces us to come to terms with something that perhaps we should have come to terms with earlier. Come to Jesus moments happen when we are confronted with something that is hurting us and others that we need to address. Now I don't for a moment want you to believe that I think the coronavirus is caused by our sin or by the world's neglect or wickedness. No. From what I understand, the initial source of this virus seems to be some sort of bats that infected people in China. But this come to Jesus moment does lift up, I believe, like nothing else has, how interconnected we all are. How interrelated, how interdependent we all are as we participate as global citizens. Suddenly we realize that we are part of a common humanity and our life is connected so integrally. We breathe the same air. So when a person near us coughs or sneezes, it affects us. We all touch the same door handles. We all use the same gas pumps. We all touch the same ATM screens. We all handle the same dollar bills and coins and mess with the vegetables and fruits at the grocery store and open the same dairy case doors and on and on it goes. We drink and eat and watch and listen to very many of the same things. We are in so many ways part of a common life together. And so the health and well-being of one affects the health and well-being of the other. And this is true globally as well. Because of the internet and widespread practice of global travel, global trade, and global commerce, everything on the globe is connected. We have found that out. Supply chains, manufacturing, financial markets, travel patterns, business relationships, all are part of this interconnectedness that now we see in a clear way. Also we see that the issues in the world are connected. It reminds us that when there is a famine in sub-Saharan Africa or floods happen in Bangladesh or murderous regimes perpetrate violence in Central America, sending people scurrying for safe borders, we are all connected and we are all affected because we are part of a global humanity. And this virus has reminded us of that. We are all dependent on one another. I need to say that the president has disappointed me on numerous occasions throughout his time in office, but perhaps none so deeply as his reaction to this crisis. For example, his own refusal 
until just yesterday to be tested for the virus when he has been surrounded by people who have been tested positive, thereby putting even his own family at risk, is a blatant example of his denial that a person's actions affect everyone else's actions. I believe it lifts up in a very clear way that his America First policy just doesn't work in a global network where we are all tied together. It is an illusion based on a heresy. I believe that this pandemic has lifted up the urgency of Jesus' call to us all to care for the neighbor and creation and to do for others what we would have them do for us, as Jesus called us to. What this come to Jesus moment has shown us is how much what we do affects what everyone else experiences and how important it is for all of us to work together to create a wholesome and just and peaceful world. Our actions, whether they are helpful or unhelpful, affect everyone else. We are all in this together, like it or not. But there is one more thing that must be said about an authentic come to Jesus moment. And that is that come to Jesus moments are not simply moments when we are confronted with truth. But there are also moments when we experience grace. For as St. John reminds us, the law indeed was given through Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. These are characteristics of a true come to Jesus moment. For these moments, give time for amendment of life, repentance, a restart, forgiveness. Come to Jesus' moments are moments of grace and truth. We see this in the story from the Gospel of John today of the Samaritan woman. She definitely had a come to Jesus' moment. But that encounter does not lead her into condemnation. Indeed, she proclaims it so. She says to her fellow citizens of Sychar, come and see the one who told me everything I've ever done. That's truth. But she is not condemned, for she has been confronted by a God whose whole hope is to give living water, to give life. Life that will gush up to eternal life. I believe that God has given us this come to Jesus moment to remind us that we are called to care for one another and all creation. God has given us this moment to remind us that we are each our brothers and sisters keepers. God has given us this moment so that we may amend our life and walk anew in the way of love and grace. And he has promised to be with us, even to the close of the age. As God said to the people of old, God says to us this day, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you, when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Amen.